Hey guys, welcome back to Coral Joy Travel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about ways you can move lighter. What does that mean? Well, essentially, I'm going to be talking about ways you can declutter your home before you make your move so you're moving less. If this is something you're interested in, stay tuned. Having a purged and decluttered pantry or kitchen or closet or basement or foyer closet or living room, etc., makes your house look cleaner, neater, more attractive to prospective buyers. And you have to remind yourself of that. It is worth it to do this, but it does take time. The moving process is so stressful. Those of us who have moved before or who are currently in this process know the stress involved is real. And it's important for us to find ways to make it easier for our own selves and our own families to get through this in a positive way. So we're talking about decluttering. I have lived in this home for 12 years with my family. When I moved here with my husband, my two children were in kindergarten and first grade. And now my oldest is a freshman in college, just finished his freshman year. Good job, Ryan. And my youngest is a graduating senior from high school. So knowing that age group and how long we've been here, it's very easy to accumulate items, isn't it? Yes, it is. And quite frankly, in the move, we don't want to bring all of the items that we have saved or kept necessarily. So we're going to be talking about decluttering. To start this process for myself, I split items into five categories. I split them into items to keep, items to sell, items to pack initially before putting the house in the market, items to donate or throw away, so either donate to Goodwill or throw away in a dumpster, and lastly, items that kind of stay in the keep section, but for displaying or for staging of our home. Those were the sections that I kept in mind when I was going through this process, and I, and I basically went through every rim. Oh boy. And this is where it gets tricky. You know, um, let's talk about the unfinished part of the basement. Let's take a walk. The places that we store crap, everything, right? The places that we store things um, that are unseen, right? And that just collect dust and accumulate. My big place was this place. For me, an area that we had a lot of junk was this unfinished part of the basement. And what I did in here was, again, I used those five categories and just tried to separate my emotional self and went through these items to decide what items I can keep, what items I can pack initially, what items I can if any items down here I can use to display um, or show off or stage, what items, this is the best ones, I can trash, woo! <laughs> and what items I can sell. And this was a fun place to actually do a lot of that. I was able to really purge a lot of items down here. This is a place where we would store empty boxes from old TVs or computer games or I don't know, like products that we would buy um, that we thought, oh, maybe we'll use the boxes again. Mm, no, mostly I th was able to throw a lot of boxes away, not throw, let me say, recycle, because I'm a recycler, um, recycle a lot of that stuff. There was furniture in here that we didn't use anymore. So we went to our local um, recycling place and there is a, a place to, to leave items for free that were, you know, gently used um, that someone else might be able to to use in their own home or refinish or refurbish, refurbish, that sort of thing. There was just so much stuff. Like I went through 
my husband's tools. I went through his tools. That probably wasn't a really smart idea, but shh, don't tell him. But I went through tools and things that we weren't using, we got rid of. Like I said, we could donate them. Um, I don't, we donated so many things that we didn't use. Now, basically, what do I categorize as I don't use? Well, if I haven't used it in the last six months plus, or I haven't, or ser certainly hasn't, haven't used it in the last two years, goodbye, we don't need you. I want this move to be lighter, right? Lighter. It's a freeing moment to move and to start over at a new place. So I was really excited to do that in here. So this unfinished part, this took a lot of time, but I am really, really happy with all of the purging and decluttering that I allowed myself to do. Some things were harder. Um, like, you know, I was going through boxes of of old cards that I had received, even from when I was in college. I mean, cards from friends, family, boyfriends, you name it. I kept those things and it, they stayed in a box uh, for the past 12 years. And so quite frankly, I decided I could say, I could release that and say, thank you. These cards were amazing. They were meaningful to me when I was 18 to 22, um, but they don't add meeting to me now and they certainly don't spark joy so i said thank you and release them but there were a lot of things that i had to do that and sometimes those emotional items that we hold on to sometimes are hard to let go of and some of them i kept some of them i did keep but some i was able to release and that felt good honestly just knowing the less i have to pack the more i have inside like the the more fulfilled i feel so that, as I reminded myself, uh, made me feel better. I might have thrown away too many things, but honestly, I think I'm going to be okay. I think I'm going to be okay. I've got my sidekick Cooper here now. <laughs> another, another area in the home that I collected a lot of things was in my kitchen and my pantry where I kept my kitchen supplies. Oh boy, uh, I can say that in my pantry I found you know, double crock pots, double blenders. Um, you know, I had two ice cream makers because one broke and I forgot to throw away the one that broke. So I don't know which one broke. I mean, it's just like all of these big items that I, I, I held on to. I held on to. And I will be honest, like I have a new crock pot this is just a side note, so this is probably me going to be ranting for a minute, but I have a new crock pot and I have a crock pot probably from 1970, okay, that my mom gave me. I cannot bear to let go of that crock pot that my mom gave me. I still can't. I, because I feel guilty. Um, and that's like so hard. And I know really, like, and I don't really use that crock pot. I mean, maybe I'll use it like once a year, every other year, you know, for a holiday where I need something warm, but I really don't use it. So it's like, oh, you know, I, I trust me. I feel the pain of decluttering. Going back to those categories in, in the kitchen, um, in the, and in the pantry, you know, I am not going to bring two blenders. So I pared down, I got rid of one. I think for me, for the declutter piece in the kitchen, just being able to take certain items out before I put my house on the market really even made the space look better. I was able to pack a few things. I was certainly able to purge and declutter a lot and donate or throw items that were broken or you know missing pieces, etc. But it takes time to do this. So it's another thing I need to say. When should we start this process? This declutter process, honestly, as soon as you are starting to think about moving, even before you've reached out to a realtor, if you're doing it with a realtor, um, certainly before you put the house on the market, but this decluttering process takes time and you need to really allow yourself that time to do this because having a purged and decluttered pantry or kitchen or closet or basement or foyer closet or living room, etc., makes your house look cleaner, neater, more attractive to prospective buyers. 
and you have to remind yourself of that. It is worth it to do this, but it does take time. For me, I started this process probably nine months before we put the house on the market. The process of getting a dumpster, donating items, and really like recycling and purging out that first major purge. We did that about nine months prior. The whole selling piece, um, I know we talked about that's one of my categories is to sell. So how, how can people sell? Well, um, you can sell at a garage sale if you want. Uh, you can sell on eBay. Um, you can sell to neighbors. You can sell on Craigslist, Facebook. What I ended up doing, this was about three months before we put the house in the market, was all of the items that we categorized into that sell pile I listed on eBay and in a matter of five weeks I'm just gonna say I became a top rated seller on eBay because I took this seriously I went in I mean it was a daily process I bought a subscription to stamps.com so I wouldn't have to go to the post office to get um, you know to send out all of these packages I could print out the packing labels at home and put them on the packing supplies that I pre-purchased from Amazon. And I did this because I knew this had to be a well-oiled machine and I wasn't going to screw around. I sold, we sold thousands of dollars of items on eBay. Now with eBay, you know, you have to be mindful of how big an item is to sell. I'm certainly not going to sell well, I wasn't selling like a couch on eBay. Um, mostly my items were small enough to fit in either, you know, a box or um, I'm giggling because I'm going to tell you something in a second or, you know, smaller packing envelopes. I, I sold I sold a ton of Disney pins, people. Um, I saw actually funny story. One of the uh, one friend that I know through the Disney community actually bought a pin of mine not knowing it was me and I didn't know it was her until after the fact well after the fact that I, I taped it up and just clicked her name rung a bell and I was like wait a second I know her so um, I sold a ton of Disney pins I sold a ton of jewelry supplies prior to me selling Disney trips I was a jeweler and so I had hundreds of pounds of uh stones, natural stones and, and jewelry supplies. So I sold all of my of my remaining items. Um, we sold old cell phones, laptops, iPads, like things that we had collected in the basement that we weren't using. Uh, old like Xbox gaming supplies. I mean, just incredible. And guys, we made thousands of dollars on eBay. And we said, guess what? We're going to use that money to get a moving company. So um, yes, it takes time. It takes time to do this. But if you, again, split this into those five categories, that sell category is a big perk. And plus, once you get it out of the house, what happens? Your house looks bigger, cleaner, brighter, more attractive to prospective buyers, like I said before. So it's all worth it, but it just takes time. So I did that, the sell piece, about three months before. I started about three months. Well, maybe it was about two months before we actually put the house on the market. I think I started that in January of 2021, and we put the house on the market in March, I think, of 2021. So just to kind of give you an idea of where, like, my time frame of when I started to do the selling. That's just what worked for me. But I highly recommend, um, you know, those those items that do have value, and instead of donating them, consider selling them. Something I forgot to mention, and it's kind of a hot mess down here, so disregard the mess. But something I wanted to mention was I, I have a home gym in my basement and I will tell you, moving companies charge a lot to move treadmills, or weight machines such as that beast over there. So in the whole thing of moving lighter, uh, we decided that we would leave, well, we asked the new buyers if they wanted our weight machine 
and our treadmill. And they of course said, oh my goodness, thank you. Yes, that would be fantastic. Could I have charged them? Yeah, but these are these are items that I, I knew. Um, I mean, it wasn't, it really wasn't worth it for us to move them in weight for the, for the items that they are. I will also say this, there are items in your house maybe that you don't think would fit in your new home. And so you may want to consider selling some of that furniture as well. We ended up selling our dining room table, our lawn tractor, our generator, our snowblower. There were many items that we knew we would not need in our new home. And we thought, well, maybe these new buyers need them. They're a younger family. And um, so we offered these for sale. Um, so again, that's another really good way to, to sell, to make some money and to move lighter. So I hope these tips help and just really be creative and think about these things. About one month before we put the house in the market, that's when I kind of went heavy on the pack category. I was packing items that I knew we wanted to keep, but that didn't need to be out. So I started packing um, cabinets in our kitchen and reducing the amount of items that were in there. Um, I started packing up my master closet, my, my clothes. I didn't touch my husband's clothes. So it looked kind of weird when people walked into my closet and saw like barely anything on my side and kind of a hot mess on my husband's, but it's all good. It's all good. Um, but again, reducing the amount, the volume of clothes, again, these are clothes we're keeping, right? And these are items we're keeping, but reducing that amount and putting it in a box and keeping the box like all organized in a basement just looks better, looks bigger. Your closet looks bigger. I don't have a very big master closet, but it looked better when I had all of my clothes that were still hanging on the same color hanger and much less, you know, stuff there. Looked much better. So the packing piece was important. I, I don't know. I, I, I probably will guess I packed maybe say 20 boxes before we put the house in the market. And we had all of those boxes at that time down in that unfinished part of the basement, which I just showed you and, you know, stacked up on each other. And it just looked, it looked tidy. You know, it looked tidy. It looked like, hey, these people are serious about moving because they have some boxes packed, um, but, you know, less stuff in, in your face. And so that was a good thing for us to do. The category of staging slash displaying, this is still in the category of keep, but I made this a separate category because before we put the house in the market, I really didn't want to spend personally a lot of money on <laughs> buying new things to stage and make our house look better, right? More attractive to a buyer. So what I did was I walked around our home like it was the store and moved items from certain locations to new locations to kind of enhance the space and give it a little lift. And one of the places that I did this in was in my master bathroom. My master bathroom is nothing fancy at all. Okay, nothing fancy at all. Last summer, so summer of 2020, I was <laughs> talking to my dear friend, Jen LaForge, who I talk about on this channel. Um, and she was refinishing her master bathroom mirror. She was gonna frame around it and uh, like a wood frame around it because I, I had the same sort of mirror set up that she had. You know, I think it's the contractor special where you get one big old slab mirror and they just glue it up there and say, there you go, it's pretty. Yeah, and I lived with that for 12 years and I was fine with it until I wanted to sell my house and I thought, well, this bathroom does not look very, it's not updated, let's just say. It's from 2002 which doesn't sound like, oh, it should be bad, but compared to the houses now, it does not look up to par. So we did the same thing. We, we framed out the mirror and painted that. And then I painted the cabinets below. The cabinets were like oak and I painted them white to kind of freshen up the space. So that was one place that 
I did, like I said, last year, but I wanted to spruce up the space a little bit more. We just have, you know, a contractor special countertop, not granite, not stone. And what I did was I had this faux plant that was tall and I had a framed picture and I just decided I would, you know, make the framed picture into a tray and put the plant on it. I tell you what, it really changed the space. It changed the space. So that's what I mean about keeping to display or stage. I, I walked around the home and, and, and moved things around to make the spaces look a little bit better. So really just being able to use some of the items that I had in the home and just repurpose them somewhere else in my home was very helpful and that was a category that really helped me just rethink and and again just trying to be a buyer and not look at the home with an emotional attachment but look at the home with new set of eyes really helped so part of the staging display category i did need to buy a couple things i would guess i probably spent tops $250 I, I would bet up less but what I what I really wanted to feature was our living room it needed a boost um, we we have um, we have a big sectional and it had it came with you know a couple pillows but ah, it just didn't do anything for me so I was looking on Pinterest to find out how to display pillows um, and I found some displays that I really liked and I wanted to go with like navy blue and like goldy dandelion yellow um, tones. And I was really happy with some of the things I found. So what I did on Amazon was bought some pillow covers. I had tons of pillows, um, like throw pillows that I've, I've purchased throughout the years. And I just bought pillow covers for those specific shapes and like transformed my my sofa so I'll show you what it looks like and I also the other thing I did in the living room was remove all of the art that we had originally up there I had lots and lots of words word pictures paintings which I love but it was distracting to the eye I felt and once I removed them I thought oh my goodness what a difference just taking them off the walls so I wanted to get some kind of art up there that would complement the navy blues the yellows um, feel in our in our living room and so I got like a, I believe it was like a five piece art framed set I don't think it was more than $150 it, but oh my goodness we got it home and we started messing around and putting the pieces up on the wall in the living room and I actually put some in our foyer too just to kind of just enhance the whole space and kind of make it flow really well I was so impressed. So those are the only things I bought, the pillow covers and the art for that display section, um, that category. I, like I said, who wants to spend money on your house when you're trying to sell it? And I know that sounds kind of weird because yes, I have, I've done my kitchen. I've, you know, just, I, I've, I've, trust me, we've spent a lot of money at this house to improve it over the last 12 years. But who wants to put that money in like a month before? not this girl. So I really, I was happy that I, I really kind of forced myself to first shop in my home and then um, shop what I needed for the rest of the staging piece and display. Guys, I can't remember if I talked about the donate and trash piece. I think I might have talked about the trash piece, but the donate piece um, of the, this category donate slash trash, the donations that we gave to Goodwill wow was zuz. I went through every closet including the foyer closet every cabinet including my mugs and let me tell you how many of you have mugs from every place you vacationed at I mean, why do we bring those home as a souvenir and they're like plastic cups like crap Okay, guys, not even talking good stuff, but I have so many of that. So I was able to donate a lot of that and it felt so good. So really do take the time 
to donate and trash items that will help you declutter your space. Because again, essentially, the whole reason we're doing this process, this declutter, is to move lighter. This was a very long video, a very long video. Uh, but I hope these tips, um, just kind of breaking down your items into those five categories really does help you with your move. I hope you have a fantastic move. I hope it's not stressful. I hope it's delightful. And I really hope you enjoy your new home because I know I can't wait to be in my new home. I cannot wait. Um, still don't have a closing date. We're not gonna talk about that again right now, but um, I know it's gonna happen. I mean, quite frankly, it, it, we have, I mean, it has to be less than two months until I'm up there. So I'm so excited and I know you guys are gonna be excited to move into your new home too. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and good luck with your moves if you're moving. Bye guys.